to switch gears a little bit and talk mm -hmm. about a different desktop environment. The one the System76 is reportedly building. Well, System76 engineer uh, maintainer Michael Murphy, who goes by MM Stick, uh, he commented that System76 will be its own desktop. When further poked about that, whether that means a fork of GNOME, the response he gave was no, it is its own thing written in Rust. When I asked you guys, for uh, you guys, the audience, for your thoughts on this, uh, Jeremy Soller of System76 responded, not confirming it, he didn't confirm it, but he said, we'll only do what makes our users happy. If it doesn't work, it dies. That's the, that's the right answer. They perhaps had a lot more in mind than, than just Cosmic. Pop Shell and Cosmic were just the stepping stones to, to ditching the GNOME desktop environment, which is surprising, mm -hmm. I think. And we need, let's, let's unpack this and talk about it. I guess we probably should clarify, Shickle, you in no way speak authoritatively for system 76 <laughs> yeah correct <laughs> yeah definitely <laughs> probably good to call out um I, I, I cannot confirm or deny anything officially <laughs> sure yeah totally fair but when i saw this like this wasn't surprising to me at all like when i saw when they with efforts like they have with cosmic and the pop shell this was just a natural progression the vibe has always been to me that like they're a very obviously customer centric mm -hmm. company right and then also very forward thinking. If it makes the experience of using um, Pop OS slash um, System76 hardware even better, why would they not do it? That to me, that just makes sense. It's it's kind of that Apple mentality of not to compare the two. It's two completely different things, but that it, mentality of being able to kind of be in control of your of your destiny somewhat. Like it makes sense that they want to develop their own software for it for hardware. They may or may not feel limited by what uh, GNOME affords to them, and so what I can say is, if you look at the trajectory of System seventy six and their software, this totally makes mm -hmm. sense. When they first launched the company as a hardware vendor. They maybe they maybe launched with like Ubuntu 17.10, and then they started immediately working on Pop OS, right? Because they wanted to to further refine the experience, and Ubuntu wasn't the experience that they wanted to give. But a lot of the components of Ubuntu mm -hmm. were right, and a lot of the components of GNOME. And then they introduced Pop Shell with the auto tiling, and so we mm -hmm. saw them go a little bit. Uh, diverge a little bit more from the traditional GNOME experience and then Cosmic diverging even a little bit more. And so th I think mm -hmm. that this, this all adds up. If it makes sense for their users and mm -hmm. it's going to give a great hardware experience, uh, then why not? Since we have Nicolo here, I wanted to say that I, I also have observed a ton of people going, hey, can we please get Pop! OS with... <laughs> KDE Plasma. I'm sure you guys have all seen this. Has System76 ever come to KDE and, and had that discussion? or Not that I know of, but okay. I am in no way uh, responsible of all developers. So <laughs> yeah, I really cannot fair. say. That. The existence of KDE Plasma and and the loud, the, the very loud impassioned requests for a fork you know, a, a variant of Pop! OS with Plasma, it leads me to believe, and again, I'm not going to put words in the mouth of System76, System I don't know why I can't say that tonight, System76, <laughs> but it really leads me to believe that uh, their design philosophy is um, not at all lined up with GNOMEs anymore. They might not like the roadmap that GNOME has, where, where their users are concerned, where, where Pop! OS users are concerned. Before we go any further, I want to take a moment to thank our friends at Tuxedo Computers for making Linux for Everyone content possible. Tuxedo specializes in sleek Linux-first laptops like the exceptional AMD Ryzen-powered Pulse 15 and the mighty Stellaris 15, which features a vivid 1440p display, your choice of 8-core processors from Intel or AMD, and up to an NVIDIA RTX 3080 for all the gorgeous gaming graphics you could possibly want. When Linux for Everyone was on the ropes, Tuxedo stepped in and helped out in a big way, and we are proud to call them a partner in this ongoing journey of ours. Go check them out at tuxedocomputers.com. I, th I think on a, a general level too, and I, I think this is something that is probably shared between any project that has to, to rely on another one upstream, 
there there's a certain point at which you're you're not able to control the changes or there there are things that are going to happen that aren't either going to allow you to keep doing the same thing in exactly the same way or are going to make things difficult to change in a certain way and i think every project uh, at some point has um has these moments where any upstream wants to go in a certain direction and those downstreams have to either find other ways to work through it or um, consider other technologies if they can't either make changes that both can work with or or, or anything like that. So um, I, th I think it's a natural progression. I mean, not speaking officially, but just straight up speaking from my heart, I, I, I trust that both projects will do you know, what they believe is in the best interests of their users at the end of the day. And, mm -hmm. and yeah. I think those priorities are just different yeah. sometimes. Nicolo, can you speak at all to the complexity or the, the undertaking that is developing a brand new desktop environment? Can you give us a sense of what <laughs> amount of work that requires? Okay, you're building your own desktop, but how much of it are you doing yourself and how much are you, you know, using it? Like, let's say the window, Windows Manager, it, you're going to take like uh, Mutter, is it called from Gnome, I think? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or are you going with another one or are you doing your own? Because just doing the Window Manager is pretty complex and that's something that you don't usually just worry about taking from other projects. There are many projects who use Kwin, even though they're not Plasma. If you're just developing like the shell, uh, well, <laughs> it, it's a bit easier already if it's just the shell. But mm -hmm. what about the more um, underlying stuff like network managing mm -hmm. or the clipboard, the audio, and you also need to write something to expose those things to the users nicely mm -hmm. from scratch and also panels and sidebars. If... It sounds and you daunting also need... to me. All of that can be done, I think, with a bit of determination. I don't think that's in an impossible task. I do trust mm -hmm. System76 if they're mm -hmm. able to do it. But how do you make sure that the design language is consistent through apps? Because no way you're going to do like apps from scratch. Like, no way. If you do keep the apps how do you make sure that the style of the apps is compatible with the one of the shell? That's not as easy as it sounds. You know, it's consistency, and that's what I'm doing in KDE. And it's <laughs> right. <not> easy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I feel like I feel like System76 has a good eye towards design language when it when it comes to mm -hmm. consistency with with Pop OS. But uh, yeah, that's an interesting observation. I I kind of find myself wondering if Pop OS will end up being like Peppermint OS. Sort of a sort of a elegantly Frankensteined distro, right? Mm -hmm. Because Peppermint OS uses elements from everything, but uses them together in a way that makes sense and looks good and feels good. I'm wondering how much how much do they write from scratch using Rust? I don't know anything about Rust. I've seen people make really incredible things in Rust, and they're ridiculously hard to break. Hmm. Um, like it's it's very easy to write decent stuff in rust compared to the, the, the traditional like c mm -hmm. stuff mm -hmm. so that that's what i really appreciate about it and i know um you know jeremy is a, a rust guy so isn't it redox that's like literally an entire kernel yes. written in rust that yes. he works on yeah mm -hmm. as always we are very curious to get your feedback as well so a real quick community voice segment this time around i asked you guys what your feelings were about System76 allegedly developing their own desktop mm -hmm. environment. This one comes from Hank G on Twitter. And he says, I was going to say first Solus GNOME and now this. If anything, I'd hope that the distros combine some efforts into a non-GNOME, non-GTK platform if this is actually the way things are going. And then completely opposite comment to that from linux for norms on twitter linux for norms many will say this is fragmenting but this is how innovation works and i've heard this term used for over a decade and it's only gotten better not worse i spent years distro hopping because nothing ever fit quite right for me until i found soulless budgie i'm all for new developments 
the people that are, are working on it and designing on it are doing so because th- there is a user base for it, whether it's just themselves or whether it is a, a certain amount of people, mm-hmm. whether or not the size of it is big or small, there is a user base and those people want that. So it, it's never it's never for nothing. The, the argument of them all just working together on one thing, I think the core flaw of that is that, yes, they could technically work together and all make one thing. But I think developers are going to do their their best work when they're genuinely interested and passionate about the direction of what they're working on. Yes. They're going to do a they're going to follow what they love because that's that's where they're going to succeed. And I, I think I think that's kind of how ev- everyone works generally. Yeah, that's that's a powerful statement. I think you're right, and I think um, I think that uh, the few the few people that I know at System seventy six would probably back you up on that. <laughs> now, I do want to read a comment from Vega. Who uh, Vega, by the way, shout out to Vega, who moderates our uh, Matrix and Discord communities. He has a bit of a more, um, um, a sharper comment, shall we say. To be honest, I think that this will hurt important areas like language support and general feel of polish. The GNOME platform is very mature compared to most other desktop environments and is in the process of ironing out the smallest of the quirks. With how System76 re-implemented search with the pop launcher, I think this will be a disaster. So no <laughs> no holding back. With all due respect to Shickle and everyone that I know over there, I very much dislike how they um, implemented search in the Cosmic. We need something like Spotlight on Mac mm-hmm. OS. That's what we need. Yep. Especially digital pack rats. You know, yep. we just just let me search for whatever. I got to know what a digital pack rat is. I'm so, I'm, the ref, it went over my head. But, okay, so a digital pack rat is, is like, to me anyway, <laughs> the definition is just, oh my God, I love that meme. <sighs> Throw it there on the desktop. Oh, like, okay, right. I, oh, oh, these outtakes. I'm just going to save these forever. I don't know if I'll ever use them. Or, you know, mm-hmm. the, the like 40 Pearl Jam bootlegs that I, that I <laughs> digitized from my tape trading days that I leave on a a USB stick and just, you know, <laughs> like I'll, yeah, oh. digital pack rat. As soon as you said meme folder, I was like, ah, <laughs> meme folder. I got you. Ah. <laughs> System 76 and pop OS is so, it, it's such a different animal than something like KDE plasma, but KDE plasma is, is trying to cast a very wide net and, and capture a wide audience. System 76 doesn't need that as much as you might want them to need that. Mm-hmm. They don't need that with Pop! OS. The only mm-hmm. people that Pop! OS has to serve well are their hardware customers, and that's the truth. Mm-hmm. It's not to be the best, most mainstream, most user-friendly, most mm-hmm. like distro with everything you want in it. Mm-hmm. It's, it's something to make their hardware customers uh, happier. If, if you look at Mac! OS in particular, I'm not aware of any instance in which people are, are, you know, like Apple's is designing Mac OS to run on like every single device out there because that's gonna, that's gonna get them what they need because it like, it's not really key to their success. You know, like if you really, really want, um, want to make a good solid product and you're relying on hardware and you have in-house hardware, <clears throat> it makes way more sense to target that and prioritize that. Mm-hmm. Um, rather than sort of sacrificing it and and maybe degrading that experience just for a few extra numbers on the market share board, like mm-hmm. it's that's not that's not going to give you the success. I'm a very first party kind of person. Mm-hmm. I always want the best solutions from one place rather than trying mm-hmm. to piece together other things. And so sometimes I, I struggle to to pick a distribution, right? With like, I may think this particular piece of it is cool, but like everything else about it is just sort of not the focus. That's not the point, right? I'm like, this is coming from over there. Mm-hmm. This is coming from over here. And the only the only like two things there are, that I care about are only part of the picture. Right? Yeah. So like when, when I choose, like let's say a plasma distribution, I've always struggled because there's there's always that like well what's the best plasma mm-hmm. distribution right and as a user I just I just want <laughs> Ooh, the one that is plasma right but obviously that's not really a thing like yeah. there's so many components to that um, and I do the same thing with gnome right like there, there 
there isn't there is and there isn't like it's the the the, the one actual gnome distribution isn't even like a distribution it's 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 a testing platform which just is like cool. i just i can't really use it you know um and that for me right extends all the way from the the highest level of the software all the way down to the hardware having that and and, and that's part of why like in the past i i oh he's going to talk about elementary os again really really um appreciated what elementary os did is because they they had a very very strong focus and they still do on that direction of having a very consistent from top to bottom uh sort of way of doing things and being very clear about what is elementary and what is not every platform as they they grow and branch out because let's be real there's what seven eight billion people in the world we're not going to run out of users <laughs> we're only we keep adding more so i think i think there's room it's a growth market okay it's a, it's growth, a growth market, market it's yes. it's just we've i think it can happen and i think at some point we'll see these grow i mean like if you look at mac os if you look at where the core of the os even started right like you know, like there's there's so many things. Like the core of macOS is is a BSD, and if you look at all the incredible things that BSD is doing in all these different spaces, right? You've got Open BSD with all their crazy security stuff, and you've got Free BSD, which is the base for a bunch of other platforms like yeah. uh, TrueNAS, and, and 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 as things grow, I think they can become their own platforms, and and that sort of rather than just having it all mm-hmm. these separate components, it becomes one, and it becomes one platform, and I think an end goal of that is hard and it's it sucks during the process but once you get there it's amazing <laughs> and everyone has the potential to get there they do yeah like they really do oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah oh 